we're going to quickly generate our necromancer and roll up the information for our first mission. Now, I have actually already created my necromancer because I kind of anticipated that <laughs> going over the rules would be quite would be quite long. So I've actually created my necromancer off camera. Um, okay, so uh, Death Wizards comes with three uh, worksheets. First is the necromancer sheet where you put details of your stats, your legacy, your abilities, your layer. The second sheet is where you put down all of your powers. Now you're going to be starting with your legacy power, the three that everyone starts with, Dark Shield, Negative Bolt and Restore Energy, uh, and then you can choose three. I have chosen Rotting Curse, Draining Wave and Bolster Undead. Um, when you get more, you can just print out another another one of these. I'm going to print it again on the back. Um, what else? Before we go any further. Okay, so I chose the one, uh, the stat block, which had the highest necromantic energy because I'm looking at my necromancer as being more of a caster rather than a, uh, a fighter. So I basically chose the stat block that had the most energy. Um, I'm a soul, sorry, I'm a spirit caller. So I can only recruit spirits and my legacy allows all of my spirits to have a plus one to their movement, which I have actually included on their thing. For my lair, I chose the hovel mainly because the defense is higher and it's more likely to survive um, lair assaults early on. Um, what else? Oh yes, my minions. One thing I did notice is there's a spelling mistake on the on the worksheet. Minons. Necromantic minons. There's an I missing. Um, but yes, yeah, so I have three minions. This is my... If you haven't watched the other video, by the way, the one where I've printed and painted the, the models, I'll put a link up. Um, but yes, this is my necromancer. What did I call him? Pizentios. Pizentios. Where'd that name come from? The name come from here. <laughs> so this is, my, this is my necromancer. I don't know whether you can see on the camera. I'll put a, I'll put a picture up of them all at the end. So this is my necromancer. Um, what else do we have? Okay, we've got Ozzy. Ozzy is my wraith. I'm using these models as my wraiths. So this is Ozzy, my wraith. I have... Am I, as, that's a, a rating of three, so it's quite a powerful creature. And I'm having two spectres as well. Beth and Lita. <laughs> Beth, Kissong. Lita, as in Lita Ford, uh, because the models are both female. So this is going to be, I don't know, I don't know which one's which yet. I'll, I'll, I'll figure out which one's which, but these are these are my specters at the moment. <laughs> and these are both uh, rating two. Now the reason that I chose specters instead of shadows is because they have a ranged attack. And I'm, look, I'm thinking, especially for the early missions, having a ranged attack is going to be extremely useful. So... Um, so yeah, I've got a wraith and two spectres, and this is <laughs> this is my warband. That's it. There's only only three undead and my necromancer. <laughs> I really need to boost this up quickly. Shadows. I think shadows would be quite useful as my next upgrade. But that all depends on how the mission goes and how the post game sequence goes. I may not get any new ones before the next mission. We'll have to see. Now another thing is with those story missions is you can actually repeat. The missions again and again if you want to um, to kind of boost yourself up before you're ready for the next mission kind of thing because as I say the difficulty can increase the number of enemies can change so uh, we'll see how it goes but yes I've got a wraith and I've got two specters Aussie Beth Lita or Lita Beth I don't know I'll, I'll figure out which ones which later on right let's move these out of the way for the moment because now we are going to roll up for our first for our first scenario. Now I am going to uh, where is it? So I'm just gonna do the first one. Scenario one, assault a village, difficulty seven. So I can bring up to seven rating of undead. I've only got seven, so that's fine. I don't have to leave anybody at home. Um, so a sort of village, difficulty seven, players one to two, and I'm playing solo. So terrain, set up three village houses in table quarter four. 
all other table quarters are randomly generated. Yeah, the deployment zones don't count. So I'm going to have to roll up random terrain for quarters one, two, and three. I've then got to roll to find out how many warriors. There'll be three villagers per player, so three. Uh, and again, victory conditions are always the same, which is a little bit disappointing. Rewards. Each necromancer may add one additional skeleton or zombie to their horde if they're allowed to recruit that type of undead. I'm not. Alternatively, you may choose that your undead gains a plus one bonus to the roll when rolling to raise new undead. So yeah, when you want to raise a new undead, when you want to add another undead to your warband or your horde, you've got to make a roll. That plus one bonus is good. Also, if I remember correctly, the more missions that you go without raising one, it gets easier and easier. So if you go a couple of missions without being able to raise new undead, if you fail the roll, I think you get like a plus one for every time you fail to the next roll. I think that's how it works. Um, what else, what else, what else? If you're playing this scenario in advanced, you also gain a plus one to the roll when restoring minions. Okay, but we're not doing advanced, we're just doing normal first. So I've got a piece of paper. <laughs> I've got a piece of paper. I'm going to be drawing the... This is the, the board. Now again, I'm probably going to be using a 2x2 two two or 3x3. Three three. Um, I'm thinking maybe a 2x2. Two because two. Um, again, the, the Snarling Badger tends to follow Warcry and Kill Team um, in terms of the, the, the sort of map size or the, the board size to to accommodate those players, which I think is kind of meh. 2x2 um, two two and 3x3 three three is much more common, in my opinion. Right, so in 1, 2, 3, 4, here we've got three houses. You've got the deployment zone here. You've got three houses. And here, just sketching. Over here we've got our deployment zone. Okay, but we've got to do random terrain. Now, this point here, Point A is actually only used during the advanced scenario because that's where more forces are going to join the battle in turn three. But we're not doing that, so we're ignoring that. Right, so we're going to be rolling up random terrain in one, two, and three. Okay, so we'll go back to here, determine terrain. So it's a D6, so a quadrant one, a four, Forest or houses. Uh, okay, a D6 again. A two. We've got a forest. So we're having a forest in quadrant one. Quadrant two. We've got a two. It's either a shrine or ruins. We've got a one. So it's a shrine. So we're going to have a shrine there. And then quadrant three. A one. Oops. And a five. D3 pools, two, two times pools. Now, uh, forest, shrines, and pools. Again, we can roll up to find sort of special types, optional features if we want to. Let's have a look, do we want to? I think for the first game, we kind of want to keep it as simple as possible. Now, forests could be beast in the woods, uh oh, corpse forests. Um, face circles. I mean, corpse forests and face circles could benefit me because this is going to be the quadrant that I'm actually deploying. But there is a there is a nasty thing here. Um, I don't know what about shrines, shrines. Um, that could be good. That could be bad. <laughs> Uh, that could be bad. Um, I think pools, do we have to roll? Pools have no special rules of their own. Hang on, this forests. Uh, forests do not have any special rules beyond requiring models to physically move around the trees unless they can fly, teleport, or otherwise ignore terrain, like ethereal. Um, but they do have cover. So forests provide cover. So that could be good yeah, to prevent maybe any missile attacks. To, what are we up against? We're up against... Uh, warriors and villagers. Do they have any ranged attacks? Uh, heroes, sorry, warriors, no. Okay, so villagers do have a ranged attack. So having a forest in this area here could help me against ranged attacks to begin with. 
Um, but they don't have any special rules unless you rule up here. Shrines? Okay, shrines do have special powers. Raid for power. When a necromancer moves within one inch of a shrine, instead of taking any other action during their activation. So I'm thinking the move doesn't count. They may raid the shrine for power. If they do so, roll a d6. On a 4+, plus, they gain d3 plus 1 energy. Ooh! But you can only do it once per game. But that's still quite useful. So I'm thinking that my necromancer may actually move over to here to the shrine. Yeah. That could be good. But again, you could get extra things. Um, I think I might, roll, I, might, I might roll for the pools, I think. Pools have no special rules, though. It depends on the type of pool. I might actually roll random. Now, two pools, they're probably going to be the same. So I'm going to roll once, and then both pools are going to be one. Deep water. Okay. Uh, these pools could be a few inches or very deep. It's very impossible. It's nearly impossible to tell the difference. When a model enters a deep water pool, roll d6. On a 6 plus, that model's move immediately ends regardless of the distance moved. Place the model so its base is completely on the pool nearest where it entered. Oh, so it can completely stop your movement. Oh, that's a problem. Never mind. We said we we're going to roll it. No problem whatsoever. So that is the layout. We've got a forest, shrine, houses, and pools of deep water. Right. Last thing we need to do is to actually roll up the enemies. So we're going to be up against three villagers. And warriors. Now the warriors are rating two. The villagers don't have a rating. They're always the same. Okay. So we've got D3 plus one. Let's see how many warriors we're up against. Son of a... I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. Oh, we're up against four. <laughs> okay, so we're up against four warriors and three villagers. Seven enemies. I've got to kill them all by turn five. Ah. So I'm thinking that after this, I might show you what happens when you fail a mission. <laughs> all right, um... Could have put money on that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let me just check the XP. Gaining XP. Okay. Uh, skirmish. Uh, Chief secondary. Okay, we're doing story. All heroes are destroyed by the end of turn three. You get a plus one. Necromancer achieves victory plus one. Necromancer has at least four rating worth of undead remaining at the end of the scenario plus one. Necromancer personally destroys two or more heroes. Or rating worth of enemy undead, plus one. Necromancer personally destroys four or more heroes, plus one. So I'm, I'm assuming that these are all... What's the word? Cumulative? So if we destroy four or more heroes, we actually get two. One for the two, and then one for the four. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, if, if I fail the mission and don't kill everybody by the end of turn five, I can still... I can still get some experience. All right, we'll have to see how it goes. Anyway, Warband is done, Necromancer is done, Scenario is ready. We've had a quick look through the rules. We've had a, a quick chat about what the game's all about. Next is gonna be Battle One, Assault on the Village. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Please take a moment to like and subscribe. If you do want to help the channel, I do have an Amazon wish list down below. Um, items that can help the quality of the production, but also uh, can provide content for the videos. Um, I don't like asking for money through Patreon or from Buy Me A Coffee, but if you guys do want to help the channel, check out the wish list, but check the shipping first. <laughs> Many thanks, guys. And again, you don't have to get anything. It's fine. Your presence here, your views, your likes, and your comments is perfectly enough. But if you do want to help, link's down below. Anyway, I will see you in the next video where our necromancer, I've forgotten his name, Pizentios, assaults the village. Take care. Stay safe. Cheers.